Hello, welcome to Journey with Jazz. This is episode one of Royalty Talks, where I'll be drinking some tea and talking about tea. Royalty Talks is based on talking about different things, different topics, but it has an undertone of royalty on it. And what do I mean by that? I mean that as a child of God, you are royalty. You are the daughter or the son of a king, and you should walk like it. You should talk like it. What you talk about should be different than what the latest Wendy Williams show is talking about. What you talk about should be different than people who gossip and are talking about other people and are speaking negatively. Your talk and your walk should be different if you're royalty. So that is what royalty talks will be about. Let's get it pop. Topic for today is a cookie and a call-in. So I have a little story and this happened a few weeks ago. At the beginning of this year, my church here in Norfolk, Virginia, we did a fast and myself and some of my friends did a fast as well. Let me tell y'all something. I'm the worst person to do a fast with. I mean, can I be real with y'all? I struggle. <laughs> I really struggle. Like if I say, okay, I'm gonna do a fast for this from this day to this day it's like right here somewhere i start changing the rules i start adding a little bit changing a little bit it's really difficult for me to just stick with it i've done it before in the past yes but i don't know it's like a psychological thing like right once you get started and once you start giving up stuff it starts looking even better and if i give up red meat the next day somebody's gonna offer me a steak you know it's just difficult so if you do a fast with me have somebody else be there for accountability because we'll start the fast doing one thing and then by the last day it'll be something completely different so yes but fast are very significant and i know it's a word that gets thrown around in church culture and not even just church, but people who want to do better, they want to sacrifice certain things, they want to diet, they want to give up certain things just to allow themselves to be open to other things that are better for them. So fasts are very beneficial and I want to talk about a fast that I was doing at the beginning of this year and just how I realized sacrificing something little is ultimately to prepare you to, to is also, let's run that back because that's the gym right there. Sacrificing something little is to ultimately prepare you to sacrifice something bigger that could be potentially detrimental to your life. So, I had decided for this particular week that I was going to fast bread, sweets, and meats. Don't ask me if I made it the whole week, but let's just say I did better this particular week than most. And my husband comes home. Mind you, let me repeat what I said. I'm fasting bread sweets sweets including juices cookies snacks everything that my husband eats <laughs> okay so he comes home with a chocolate chip cookie from mcdonald's mind you he doesn't eat from mcdonald's ever why does he have a chocolate chip cookie i don't understand and not only did he bring it home he puts it up like he's not even eating it it's just it's just there i asked him about it he doesn't even want it i mean it's just available calling my name actually because i love mcdonald chocolate chip cookies okay so i was just so tempted i was just so tempted to eat it and in my mind i was just like it's not really that big of a deal it's just a cookie like nothing no one is going to be hurt by that you know like it's not going to affect anybody i'll get back to my diet later i was home by myself and it was like i've had a long day that's what we do when we're giving up something, we start justifying why we should have it. We deserve it. You had a long day, you worked hard, and it's just, why not? So anyways, I kept looking at the cookie. I wanted it, it just looked so good. I've never wanted a McDonald's cookie so much in my life, but I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it, and I prayed. I stopped what I was doing. I stopped playing these mind games with myself because when we're doing something for God, we have to remember that our dependence is in God, not in ourselves. 
So you have to pause and go to God. And that is where your strength comes from. That's where your discipline comes from. That's where you have understanding of the importance of what you're doing. And it makes it more beneficial or at least worth it. So I said, okay, I'm going to go pray. And Lord, you're going to have to change this desire for wanting this cookie. Because if you don't, I might come out of prayer and come eat it. So God is on you. So I go and I go pray. And I just asked, you know, my main prayer was just like, you know, it's why am I so pressed like to eat this cookie? And can you take this desire away from me? And then also just show me why is it so deep that I don't eat it? Because I really felt like I shouldn't have ate it. You know, it's kind of like the tree, the I'm having a I'm having a blank. Adam and Eve <laughs> and the apple and the forbidden fruit and for them not to eat it, it seems so minimal to not eat fruit, but it what it was what it represented more than anything, which is why it was detrimental. So I came out of prayer and I made my mind up I wasn't gonna eat the cookie, I wasn't gonna touch it. I put it in the fridge. I think it was just like sitting out, just calling me. <laughs> so I put it in the fridge and I had a situation happen after that. So I, on my Instagram, sometimes I reach out to different Christian couples and different people who I feel like they have different traits that I want or I want for my marriage or my family. And I reach out to them and ask, okay, so how did you get here? Or what did you do to get to the level that you are now? And it's very genuine and it's just me wanting to be better and knowing what I can do to be a better wife, to be a better mom, and to just make things better for my family. So, I'm gonna bring it all in. So I got on Instagram after this whole cookie situation and I had already been going back and forth with a guy who is married, he's in another state, I don't even know where him and his wife are from, but they're into ministry, they were doing a Bible challenge, and I just really admire what they had. So, I had come to realize that it wasn't just that I admired what they had. I specifically admired who he was and the man of God that he was and what he represented. Mind you, I don't know what happens in their house. I don't know what happens behind closed doors. I don't even know if he's really, if he really has the Holy Spirit. I don't even know these things. I'm just going by what I see from the outside. And I realized that that was what was drawing me to reach out to him and talk to him. So... I'm bringing, I'm bringing this in. So it looks, it looks innocent and I truly was genuine in inquiring. So what did your wife do to help you, help build you up or help mold you into the man that you are today? And that's what I asked him. I didn't ask her. I could have asked her. I wasn't thinking to ask her. I wanted to ask him. And once I prayed, mind you, I'm praying about the cookie. But when I came out of prayer and I was confronted with the situation, when we were going back and forth in this dialogue, I had clarity about that particular situation. And I realized that it was a trap. And some of you may say, what is she talking about, a trap? So we have to realize that as believers, the enemy sets traps for us based on our weaknesses, based on our desires, based on our failures in the past, ways that we've chosen sin or what we wanted at that time over God in the past. He uses those things based on what he knows about us and sets traps. So in that particular situation, I, yes, I was seeking advice, but at the same time, I almost was envying what this particular couple had and this man that, this married man, it was almost like, I want what you have for my husband. Even though I don't even know what you have is authentic. Even though it's not my job to take what somebody else has and bring it to my man. Like, that's not even my role. You know, God deals with us individually in his own way. And so, even though it's, it's deception is interesting because on the outside it looks beautiful but once you pray god will show you areas in your heart that are being deceived the bible says that the heart can be deceitful so that's why it's dangerous for us to just be moving and going and making these decisions on our own because there are certain things that we cannot see and that's why it is important for us to get into the practice of sacrificing things so me sacrificing that cookie was really preparing me to give up 
this particular interaction and this encounter that I was having. And I didn't want to, even though I knew I didn't want to stop that conversation because I was like, no, I, I shouldn't have to. I'm being genuine. I really want to know this information. And plus, you can't just dip out on somebody after you've already been talking to them. Really? Somebody that you don't really know? Somebody that your husband doesn't know that you're talking to? Somebody that is married does his wife know that you guys are having this conversation it's difficult for you to end that conversation and so i had a heart check i really did and i realized that on the in the midst of something that was good and and it seems good it was a it was just like a undertone of deception and evil and the enemy trying to lure me and lure me into something and i'm not even saying him he could have really been a man of god it was what it represented and what the enemy knew that I liked and how he was trying to pull me towards that. And so I literally ended the conversation. I didn't respond. I deleted the thread and I unfollowed him. And I haven't followed him again until this day. I still follow his wife, but there's no connection at all with me and this guy. Um, he was attractive. He was a man of God. He had traits that I wanted from my own husband. Him and his wife had stuff that I wanted from my own marriage. And it was literally just... It was coveting, it was envy, but at the same time, it was almost like I wanted it. So I was engaging with it, even though I didn't realize it. So why do I say all this? By the way, that same night after I ended that conversation, I sat down with my husband and I told him. I told him my thought process. I told him how I felt the enemy was tempting me. I told him why I reached out. I told him that I cut it off. Like I just confessed it. And then once I confessed it, it was over. Cause after the situation or whatever, I like God was just like, now you have to tell him. It was just it was straight like that. Like it couldn't just end there. I had to confess it, and not only confess it because the Bible says to confess your sins to each other and you will be healed from them, which I was afterwards. I didn't think about it anymore after that time, but also it set a tone in our marriage. Like we're we're imperfect. We're going to think things and do things that we're not supposed to that may offend the other person or hurt the other person's feelings but the most important thing is to come to each other and talk about it and i think that me doing that kind of set a model or a tone for the both of us so that when he is in a situation which life happens something's going to occur you know where he may feel tempted or another woman does this or that he will feel open to come to me and talk to me about it just like i did for him so <laughs> that was the situation and that's why I said a cookie and a calling because a cookie is something that's really small but sacrificing something like a cookie or sacrificing whatever it is that you may be fasting meat or maybe social media or maybe this or that it, it could be anything that could potentially be blocking you from having access to God or at least hindering you from being able to hear him sacrificing those things means that you're going to God when you want that thing and when you go to God he's going to give you understanding and clarity and even fulfill your desires to change them so you don't no longer want that so then when something big happens a big no-no that you really can't do it's not up for debate it's not oh I messed up on my fat no it's adultery it's fornication it's something big that God says no this is detrimental to your purpose and it's detrimental to your relationship with me. Those small sacrifices are preparing you for when you have to say no to those big things. And that's what I understand about fasting and giving up things. They prepare you. And that's pretty much how that situation went for me. And I'm free from that. The enemy did not get me. I don't know where that would have led to. I don't know if it just would have been a distraction. I don't know what it would have ended up being but the point is I cut it from the very beginning before it could either before it could even plant a seed of anything I cut it and now he has he doesn't have that territory in my mind and my heart so a cookie and think of a cookie as your small sacrifice is equivalent to a bigger sacrifice that will align you by giving up that bigger thing it's gonna align you in the purposes of God and I think it's really good to think about when you are in a particular situation, when you know something is not, just doesn't feel right. So thank you for joining me on episode one of Royalty Talks, Cooking and a Calling. I will see you all next week.